Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can subscribe to the show. There's an RSS feed, iTunes link, as well as all the old back episodes at rce-cast.com. I also have here Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and one of the esteemed authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for lending your help. Hey, Brock. A um, couple worthy things of, of mentioning here. So we're coming up in July here. So the end of July is when uh, supercomputing boffs and posters are due. So make sure you get working on that. i got to get working on my abstract for the Open MPI status, state of the world boff. Um, also, always accepting uh, questions for my blog. So Brock and I have blogs and Twitter and things like that. I just got a couple of user-submitted questions, which were really great. So if you have any questions about MPI or the inner workings or outer workings of MPI, please be sure to let me know, and I'll address them on my blog. Also, I'm going to be at the XC12 conference in Chicago uh, in the third or third week of July. Um, so if you're going to be there, be sure to look me up. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, we can go ahead and roll into our guest today. And I, I'm actually, I've been trying to get these guys on, and they finally agreed to do this. I don't know if I just pestered them enough over the last few years, but this software library is one of the, probably one of the most popular and most useful libraries come across in scientific computing. So what we have today is FFTW, Fastest Fourier Transform in the West. And we have with us the creators, Stephen Johnson, who is at MIT in the Applied Mathematics Department. He's a faculty there. As well as Matteo Frigo, who is currently at Quanta Research Cambridge. So uh, Stephen, Matteo, can you take a moment and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Matteo Frigo. I'm originally from Italy, but I have lived uh, in the United States for almost 20 years at this point, uh, mostly in the Boston area and in Austin, Texas. I got my PhD in computer science from MIT in 1999. Um, I'm mostly an expert in parallel computing. Uh, my main research topic was a programming system called Silk, uh, which is now part of the Intel ECC and also part of GCC 4.7, so it's uh, having its impact in the world uh, through that route. Um, I was one of the authors of the paper on cache oblivious algorithms that some of you may have heard about. Um, I've worked on several different things, including medical devices, software radios, compilers for exotic architectures, and most recently I am at Quanta Research Cambridge, which is a research lab uh, next door to MIT, and I'm working on a form of error correction called, uh, uh, called network coding. Okay. And of course, I work on FFTW with, uh, with Steve. Hi, I'm Stephen Johnson. I'm one of the co-authors of FTW. I'm currently a professor of applied mathematics at MIT. I got my PhD in 2001 in physics from MIT, and a lot of my work centers on nanophotonics, basically electromagnetism in uh, in media that are structured on the scale of the wavelength. And I do a lot of analytical stuff, but also a lot of computational uh, stuff. Uh, we have a, a free textbook on uh, a lot of my research uh, called Photonic Crystals Molding the Flow of Light. If you Google Photonic Crystal book, you'll find it as the first link, and you, you can download it as a free sort of undergraduate textbook. And uh, uh, so in addition to that, I work on things like solar cells, optical fibers, uh, 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 radiative heat transfer, uh, uh, micromechanical devices, uh, in a lot of different kinds of projects. And so in addition to FUTW, I've written a bunch of uh, fairly popular free software packages for uh, simulating electromagnetism. So MEEP, uh, MPB, uh, are two uh, uh, EM simulation packages. I also have a, a package called NLOPT, which is a free nonlinear optimization package. Can you give us a basic rundown of what is FFTW and what it aims to solve? So FFTW is a software library. Uh, it's callable from C and many other languages uh, that performs fast Fourier transforms and related transforms like uh, discrete cosine transforms and discrete sine transforms, uh, which are widely used in a lot of different areas of scientific computation. Now, what does it stand for? So, I mean, you, you said the FFT part. What is the W part? So, FFTW stands for the fastest Fourier transform in the West, uh, which is you know, kind of a whimsical title. There's no 
single program that's the fastest everywhere. Uh, I think actually the, the the name for Mateo, if you remind me, I think the name for that uh, even predates FHW. I think you you gave me one of your. It started out with you giving me one of your old programs and calling it the fastest in the West. I think. Yeah, the story went that uh, I had written a program to compute Fourier transforms on the Connection Machine 5, uh, which was a supercomputer of the early 90s. And uh, at some point, Steven asked me whether I had an efficient FFT code, and I gave him that program telling him, look, this is the fastest in the West. You cannot do any better than this, which wasn't true. Uh, But that's how the story started. (laughs) That's how all good names start is with a story. So... For the benefit of our listeners, can you say what exactly is a, a Fourier transform and, and how is that different than a fast Fourier transform and, and where are such things useful? So uh, Fourier transforms uh, uh, basically decompose a signal or a function into a set of frequencies. It's, you know, if, if you look at the graphic equalizer on your stereo or whatever, that, where the little bar is going up and down, you hear music and it decomposes it into how much of that is bass, how much of that is treble, and an FFT or a Fourier transform just does that in much more detail. Uh, a there are a lot of varieties of, of Fourier transforms mathematically. On a computer, you deal with discrete signals that have you know, a finite number of data points, uh, and the, the way you transform those is something called a discrete Fourier transform. And a fast Fourier transform is an algorithm to compute a discrete Fourier transform quickly. Uh, so it, it, if you have n points, it famously can do it in order n log n operations. And these are used for a huge number of applications. You know, the obvious ones are things like audio processing, where y- you directly think of filtering a signal in terms of taking out certain frequency components or enhancing other frequency components. But there's a lot of non-obvious applications that don't seem to have anything to do with frequencies. Uh, for example, if you just want to multiply two very large numbers with a million digits, it turns out that there's a fast way to do that uh, by compu- performing an, an FFT of the digits uh, and then doing uh, a simple multiplication of, of each individual uh, digit and then fast Fourier transforming back. And they're used for solving partial differential equations and uh, a lot of problems. So you mentioned that this was you know, the connection machine original effort. Oh, what, what's a little bit more of the history of FFTW, and why do you still have it, and why do you keep working on it? So, uh, as Matteo said, he you know he had actually started programming programming FFTs before me. Um, so around 1997, I was a graduate student. Matteo was actually a visiting scholar at MIT at that time. And I was working on uh, solving Maxwell's equations for my research. And we were using a spectral method, which involves, which requires you to do FFTs. And I, I needed an FFT that was fast. And I was using you know, my own uh, machine. We were using Linux machines. We were using uh, logging in, using crazy 90s and a whole bunch of different supercomputers. And we wanted one that I wanted one that worked on all of them, that was parallel, so I could take advantage of all of them. That was multi-threaded because we had multi-core machines, and you know I wasn't sure which. I looked around at what was available, and it didn't seem like there was one that that did everything I wanted. In particular, there was a, not much selection of parallel FFTs at the time, uh, mostly vendor-specific ones. So, uh, you know, I was telling Matteo about this because I, I knew him. Uh, 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 at MIT, and uh, he said, oh, I have a fast FFT, super fast, fast Fourier transform, the fastest in the West, as he said, and y- you should use that. And it was, it was parallel with Silk. Wasn't, it wasn't uh, distributed memory, but it, it was um, it, multi-threaded. And so I took it, and uh, I also downloaded half a dozen other codes, uh, free codes from the Internet. You know, there's one by Singleton in 1968, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of things you can download. You, you could download even then. And I benchmarked them on a couple different machines and plotted the results as a function of size. And, uh, you know, Mateo's was pretty good. It was sometimes the fastest, but not, not always. There were some 